Welcome back everyone. In this episode from Ampro Engineering, we're going to talk about a set of wheels that I recently designed. What wheels? Well, those wheels. Now, as you can see, these are Fuchs wheels that you would normally find on a Porsche. Uh, I don't own any kind of Porsche. I, uh, I know you'd also find these on a Volkswagen Beetle. And although my sister has a beautiful MO2L Volkswagen, she's about 300 miles away from me. So here we have the only M series uh, Tamiya that I own. And I think this is a good representation of the, uh, the of how the wheels look on your car. The first thing I want to mention is, despite the fact that the front and rear tires are exactly the same. I was kind of blown away by this, but the the fact that these wheels, um, they look like the tire is much bigger. They also look like they're deep dish. And I have to assure you that the offset on these wheels is identical to the offset of the rears. You probably don't recognize the rear wheels. These are also my design. Uh, these are a Fiat 500 sport wheel that you would typically find on a um, Fiat. 500. So these are also printed, but um, you know, I did want to focus on these guys for the time being. What we have here, and I kind of want to explain the differences, this is a single piece wheel. So it's one print. This is done in SLS nylon. You know, it does have some, you know, pretty pretty basic details, but that's you know how the wheel looks. The the Fook posed a very different conundrum here. This was the kind of wheel that needed to be painted in steps. I'm going to try and bring this a little bit closer so you can see that you are going to have to paint, you know, within the wheel right in here to paint that black and there's a little ridge right here that's black and you have the lug nuts and this basically looks like a, a nightmare to paint. Fortunately, I don't want to deal with having to paint wheels like this. Uh, you know, to me, it's, it's a lot of effort. You have to do a lot of masking and I don't know, it's tough. Plus, these wheels are intended to have some chrome trim. And I actually did use a chrome paint for these. It's Duplicolor uh, chrome engine paint that you'd find at the auto parts store. And it's an aerosol can. Well, in order to get these chrome features, you'd have to mask everything off after primering it. And I simply didn't want to deal with that. So, here is how I got around this. This is the wheel. What you see here are wheels printed in ultra detail plastic. Okay, it's very, very finely detailed. Uh, it does come in this translucent color, but what I want to tell you is that these are very, very costly. Normally, what you're gonna wanna get is the nylon. The nylon wheel is going to have a very, very similar detail, simply because, if I can get a little bit closer here, you can see the surface texture and surface finish, is, it's very, very uh, smooth. So you're not really losing out any detail. And most importantly, it's a little bit hard to see. There's a little ridge right here. Can you see that? Uh, it's, yeah, it's pretty easy to see right here. This ridge is half a millimeter thick right there. The reason for that ridge is so that with your paintbrush, after you shoot the rim in chrome, you can go around it and get this perfectly sharp black edge in here with simply using the edge of your paintbrush. I use the paint marker because it's a little bit easier, but you get the idea. So you get the wheels and I said, you're probably going to want the nylon as you look at the car like this and the nylon and the, uh, the ultra detail plastic are going to have almost no, no difference uh, when looking at them at this kind of distance. They're going to look exactly the same. The wheels are not all you need. You are also going to need the center. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what to call it, the center flower looking piece or the little trim piece. Once you paint this, you drop this, also having been painted, right on there. There's a pretty significant gap around these posts and these holes. If you find that this does not fit easily into your nylon wheel, just, you know, get maybe a little uh, X-Acto knife and just kind of clean it out because, you know, there could be some additional powder in there from the polishing process, so you don't want to get that stuck. Put a dab of model glue in the holes, drop that in once it's been painted, and there is your centerpiece here with perfectly sharp edges because they were painted separately. That is not it. You also notice here that we have lug nuts. These come as a set of 24. Okay, I've taken a few of them off for another project, but 
This is basically what you're gonna get. You want to paint these on the sprue. Again, I used a chrome paint, which just very, very uh, light passes on the on the aerosol. You don't wanna saturate these because again, the holes in these are, are just slightly undersized to drop into the holes on the wheels. So there you go. They are very, very small. So the last thing you wanna do is, you know, kind of put them somewhere where you're gonna lose them. Oh, hang on. Let you. Oh, crap. Now those are the uh, the main pieces of the wheels, but you're probably wondering where the lug nut went. So obviously at the rear we have our central lug nut, and at the front we don't. Well, it's just a little cap that just pops right off. There's our lug nut. I do want to mention that I designed these wheels around this lug wrench. Do not use some oversized one or some heavy duty one. This will barely, barely, barely fit in there. There is, oh God, the, the amount of clearance in this has got to be fractions of a millimeter. So be careful, test fit this in here first. You make, you make sure you don't want to, uh, you don't want to overly uh, paint this and make it too thick so that this does not fit. So test this out, but it barely fits, okay? Secondly, once you've glued this uh, flower portion here in place, uh, these will fit. Okay, they pop right in there, but um, this is more of a shelf type feature here. Uh, the It's hard to see, but the profile, there is no like lip that sticks off that gives you good grip on it. So if you wanna keep this on and run the car, it's glued on, that's as simple as that. Maybe you can uh, add a little bit of uh, thickness to it with some super glue to make it a little bit uh, stiffer in here but i simply don't recommend that the ultra detail plastic for these flower pieces and the center caps is simply too brittle for this so i recommend that the center caps are used for display purposes it is a bit hard to see these are porsche styled center caps i just uh, have a little raised feature here that kind of gives the porsche logo impression if you do own your volkswagen beetle we also have a Beetle variant, a Volkswagen variant here. Lastly, there's a third one that simply has a flat face. So if you have a, a decal of a Porsche emblem to put in. Now, some little hints here about painting these. What I did first, and again, these are the ultra detail, but this applies for the nylon as well. I primered this in a matte black. I believe the insert here is supposed to be glossy. Do not use gloss use matte. Historically, matte paints are much, much thinner. So give it a very light coat of matte paint. Once the entire thing is black, and that should be pretty easy to do, because obviously if it's not black, this will be translucent. If you uh, go with the nylon, which you probably will, the nylon is only available in white polished. So give it a few coats of matte paint, then get some masking tape, get a circle template, figure out what the closest circle size to this diameter here is, cut out a piece of masking tape that's a circle, and just drop it in here. At that point, you're gonna have, and I've got a picture of it up right now, you've got the inside that's in blue, and the outside lip that's exposed, you're gonna paint that chrome or silver or, or whatever uh, custom color that you want. So I used chrome, so go ahead and paint that in chrome. Once that dries, and I, uh, if you haven't painted with chrome very much, give it a long time to dry. Don't touch it for at least a day. Once that is done, you can peel the blue tape off and then very carefully with a paintbrush, come in here and just detail this inside lip. And again, if you, if you do uh, end up purchasing these, you'll see this lip very, very clearly. Just run it along that edge and you'll get a perfectly sharp separation line between the inside face and the chrome ring. Do not go over this inside area with very much black paint. When you do add the uh, the gloss black, if you do want to, make sure that you focus the black, thank you camera, that you focus the black, uh, the gloss black uh, paint in these areas here and not inside these holes. You'll make it difficult to get the lug nuts in. These are a little bit simpler. You're going to want to go ahead and just primer these as well. Uh, I recommend using the same primer, uh, primer that you did with the wheels. Again, you want to use something maybe a matte color, nothing gloss. Let it dry and then shoot them in chrome. I very much recommend you do not shoot the rears. Let these dry and then when they're done, glue them in. Same with these. Now the problem with something this small is it will blow away as you're trying to paint it. So I like to get a piece of masking tape, set it on top, 
and then paint it. Again, very, very light coats here, otherwise you'll blur the emblem and you don't want to do that. And then once all that's dry, do your final assembly of the lug nuts. I was blown away how little time this took. It was easy, I mean, just look at this. It came out so sharp. And the beauty of it is uh, the Tamiya ones that are available for the uh, larger one-tenth scale cars, they don't have this. To me, that makes the wheel correct. So I'm pretty excited about this. And I cannot wait to try these on my sister's Beetle because it will look absolutely amazing. I'm going to flash the part numbers on right now. So you, if you want... Get out of you. Okay. If you want the wheel, these come by themselves. They're just one a piece. You have to order four of these. Now there are four variations. You have your zero offset, which is this one here. The zero offset is what is bone stock to me. I took a set of the Panasports that were on the uh, M chassis when I got it and set that as my offset. You can see on a Fiat 500, they're practically level with the outside of the body. Same with the rears. You have your zero offset, you have your three millimeter offset, which makes it a slightly deeper dish, six millimeter offset, and nine millimeter offset. The assembly process is gonna be the same for all of those. Just note that it might be a little bit harder to paint the inside area there uh, when, when you do, or in the event that you do want one of those plus nine uh, offset wheels. Again, these all create more of a deep dish wheel. Next, you're gonna want these centerpieces here. One order of these comes with all four, they're attached with a sprue. Same ones, uh, these are the same for all four variants. Then you have the center caps, which come for Volkswagen, Porsche, or blank. Also one order has four, and then one order of the lug nuts has 24 of them. And that's it, folks. I hope you enjoyed it. I also wanted to tell you that I have a locker. This is a prototype, but I have a locker available now, a solid axle, Pumpkin, Hornet, you know, that whole standard transmission. I'll go into a little bit more detail on these because I, although I designed these 3D printed versions, I was asked to create these by a gentleman, who again, I'll go into more detail a little bit later, who created some beautifully machined ones. So these are uh, currently available, but I'll go into a little more detail on these uh, in a future episode. Well, everyone, thank you for watching. I hope you like these wheels. They're, I think, pretty darn cool. Please subscribe. I've got so much more craziness coming up. Ooh, 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 I have to show you what I got. Where is it? There, no, here it is, yes. Okay, check this out. So I have the King Cab, yes. Coming up very soon, I picked up these, uh, this Transplate and these other transmission pieces here from Radio Controlled Customs. And this is going to allow me to install a team associated stealth three gear transmission into the King Cab. So I, Cannot wait for this. I'm sure I'm going to upset many to me appears, but sorry, I want a working transmission. If you like the video, please click the little like button. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Ampro Engineering. And before you take off, check out the band Blue Pinto. They allow me to use their songs in all of my videos and a link to their Facebook page is in the end credits. Thank you so much and we'll see you next time.